Welcome, everyone. Thank you all for making it over here after an epic like keynote welcome session. Uh, my name is Jody Garnett, and it's my pleasure to be chair for this session. And I'd like to introduce our first speaker, Andrea Amy from GeoSolutions, and also myself. So pleased to meet me. Thank you for <laughs> joining us. And we're, without further ado, we're just going to start. Thank you, Jody. So this presentation, State of GeoServer, is about um, the new uh, functionalities that we introduced uh, during the last year in GeoServer. So it assumes that you already know about GeoServer and you want to know what's new inside GeoServer. We all know what GeoServer is, I hope. Uh, so Server uh, publishes over a number of OGC protocols, supports a number of extensions, uh, input formats, and so on. So what happened in 2019? Uh, GeoServer continues to uh, pursue a really aggressive release roadmap, releasing every six months. So we released uh, a GeoServer 2.14, 2.15, uh, and right on the horizon here is uh, GeoServer 2.16. Um, are you using an older version of? Ge are you using an older version of GeoServer? Please upgrade now. Don't delay. Uh, the newer versions do include security uh, fixes. We only provide those security fixes uh, for the newer version. Uh, please upgrade your existing installations. Uh, what do you get if you update? We're going to um, have a look at the bottom of the slides. We're going to show what features have arrived in these new versions of GeoServer. Um, the icon uh, marks uh, what version it was provided in, who the author was, and who the sponsor or customer was. For things that were done out of the kindness of a developer's heart or their enthusiasm, the sponsor will be a little heart symbol. Um, we've got a, one project steering committee um, update. So the project steering committee is a group of individuals from different organizations. Um, our, uh, the PSC member, Ben Kardec Davies from New Zealand, has stepped down from the PSC, so we'd like to thank him for his service. Uh, in terms of committers, these are the folks that uh, do the day in and day out uh, maintenance activities. Uh, and if, uh, we would like to recognize two new committers this, uh, this year, Steve and Fernando. Uh, thank you for joining the GeoServer team. Uh, we also have a number of community modules. So community modules are R&D experiments. Uh, developers propose community modules in order to try out an idea. Uh, we only say they compile until they're ready with documentation uh, and quality assurance uh, coverages. Uh, these are just experiments kind of use at your own risk. Um, if you are interested in any of these, please contact the author. So uh, new ones we've got here are an, an API, or sorry, OGC API one, one from GeoStyler, uh, an interesting one for working with Azure services, MapML, uh, OGR, and SAML. And a few other experiments have finished, and they've been taken out of the code base. Uh, we did have one setback as a team this year. The build server we were using suffered some online vandalism. Um, so this was the build server responsible for our monthly releases, our Windows installers, our documentation, and so on. We've been working with Planet Federal to restore build services for the team. Um, we are mostly back in action, but we still don't have Windows installers. Oh, and uh, uh, site conformance tests. Um, in terms of service providers, uh, we break our service providers down into core contributors uh, who help with the project sustainability, experienced providers who contribute to GeoServer for their, on behalf of their customers. We'd like to welcome uh, the GeoCat, uh, who I work for. Uh, we would also like to thank some of the service providers that are uh, leaving our community, Boundless, uh, Avita, and LisaSoft. We've taken off uh, our list because they're no longer practicing. Okay, so in terms of what's new in terms of functionality, let's have a look at the new vector data sources uh, features. So the MongoDB data source, which allows you to connect to a MongoDB and publish maps out of it, has gradu graduated from a community to extension status, meaning that it's now officially supported. And uh, um, well, yeah, you can take your documents in a MongoDB and map them out into simple features with, uh, with this. Uh, PostgreSQL has seen uh, a bunch of action. Uh, some new data types like uh, arrays and uh, uh, HStore have been added. We added support for a TWKB transfer, which optimizes how we transfer geometries from 
the database to GeoServer, which helps in terms of performance. We added near search. Uh, we uh, added a full binary transfer where prepare when prepared statements are enabled, which also helps performance. And we have a control over SSL, which is enabled by default, but uh, uh, choose a lot of CPU. So now you have the possibility to turn it off if you trust the network between GeoServer and the database with uh, a quite significant performance uh, improvement. Um, the Spatialite native data store is gone, unfortunately, because uh, we, we lacked a maintainer for it for years now. So we had to, to drop it, uh, but that doesn't mean that you cannot access Spatialite anymore because the OGR data store got revived and through the OGR uh, na native access library we can access Spatialite as well, uh, as well as FileGDB and other, uh, many other formats supported by OGR. This is going to be only in 2.16 to be released in a couple of weeks. Um, I can continue with the raster data sources. So we have a new S3 GeoTIFF community module that allows you to pick uh, GeoTIFFs uploaded in a S3 uh, Amazon cloud. Uh, the um, upgrade to GDAL 2.x uh, also included the, the uh, raster readers. And uh, the good news is that you don't no longer have to download our special um, built package of GDAL, but you can use the uh, official packages from the project. Uh, should work for uh, any GDAL 2x. Again, only in 2.16x. Um, you want to take over? Sure. Uh, so an interesting new capability for WMS, one of the options is to do your WMS uh, query with a time range. Uh, so there's now near, uh, better control over what data you pull back. It could be the nearest match. Uh, to, that's the closest one to the time selected. The possibility to set like a small search radius. Um, the actual time uh, the user is returned uh, is in the HTTP response header. So that's a new configuration option. Um, kind of an interesting one is you can get back the legend graphics associated with a layer. That usually is just a little PNG image. Uh, we've added a new option for a JSON output, uh, which provides a little JSON data structure uh, telling you uh, a little bit of details about the individual legends. Uh, an interesting um, quality of, uh, uh, of map production is dynamic densification along the long lines of uh, projection. So you can see our previous uh, versions over on the left, and we get a much smoother, uh, higher quality image over on the right. And you can see the author of this feature stand, uh, sitting there. <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, another kind of change under the hood is we've updated the EPSG definitions used inside um, inside GeoServer. Uh, over a thousand new coordinate uh, reference systems have been added. Particularly, we've done this to, um, to uh, enable our friends in Australia with their new GDA 2020 projection, but useful for everyone else. Did you want to do your rant? Rant. Oh, rant. Yes, rant. I, I love to rant. So I asked on the user list to, for people to try it out because there were so many changes in the APSG database, thousand new projections, many were modified since many years ago. There wasn't a single answer. I was pissed. So if you don't want Andrew to be pissed, please help uh, try test our release candidate, which will be coming out this week. Uh, we would really love your feedback. It will help make sure the next version of GeoServer 2.16 is better, and it will make Andrea happier. And we all want Andrea to be happier. Uh, a nice uh, performance speed up here is for complex styles. So if you've got a style with hundreds of rules uh, with co uh, complex filtering conditions, um, Andrea's got a nice example here. GeoServer can process those thousands of rules and find the right symbolizer a little bit quicker. Um, Andrea's got a talk on Friday if you're interested in the details. Um, for web feature service. So uh, we are almost WFS 2.0 compliant. Lots of work went make into making GeoServer pass the certification uh, on simple features. 48 issues were fixed. We've got a couple more fixes to do, um, but uh, obviously more urgent matters. But we do hope to be WFS certified shortly. Um, an interesting one here is WFS measure support. So this enables coordinate measurements, so you can include coordinates um, uh, and the additional measures associated with your data. And that is primarily supported by PostGIS. Any other data source? OK. Um, so in the example there, you can see some of the measures being returned. 
I'm not sure I know about this one. Okay. So application scheme is when you've got a set data product you need to publish and you need to map from your source data into that application schema. Some improvements have been made uh, when you're working from Mongo document databases to uh, map over to application schema. Um, okay. I, I, I'm not really across uh, Hale and Solar and so on. Uh, the way in which this works is we're taking the complex JSON data structures um, and we're making, yeah, we're in, you better do this one, Andrea. Okay. I wasn't involved. <laughs> right, so uh, when you do application schemas, you normally publish in GML, and you have full support for that for, for years and years, but GeoJSON is taking over, and GML is sort of uh, dying down. So GeoServer also supports publishing complex GeoJSON out of application schemas, and you get more or less the same information. But the, the output was not exactly perfect. It didn't quite look like GeoJSON at all uh, because it was too strictly uh, bound to the GML rules. So we made a number of improvements, like uh, when uh, taking over the attributes, uh, now they are um, XML attributes. They are now pa part of the payload with a at uh, prefix. Uh, in GML, there is this uh, bizarre alternation of property container and element, and they have the same name, so you have a repetition. My property contains my property, which contains the value, which is a bit bizarre, so we skipped it in, well, in, in, in GML, it's uh, mandatory, but we skipped it in GeoJSON. And any time a nested uh, element in the complex geo, uh, GeoJSON is another feature, we maintain it as a GeoJSON feature, preserving identity, uh, putting the geometry top level, and so on. So it looks like a better GeoJSON than it used to. Uh, right, so the other thing would have been the WFS3 community module, but uh, you can still download it, but it's basically dead. And you might wonder, why did you kill the WFS3? Because we got something better. Uh, I have been working during the last month uh, on uh, OGC API services uh, module. Um, I don't want to uh, bog you in details right now because I have a presentation in Fortuna, uh, I don't remember if east of or west, uh, west um, this afternoon about this very topic and I'm gonna talk about, uh, about it 20 minutes. But uh, just know that uh, we are uh, now implementing a new plugin for GeoServer called OGC API, which exposes the features API, which is the new WFS3, but also a styles API, which allows you to publish and manage the styles a tiles API, which is the replacement for WMTS, and more will come, like the maps API replaces WMS, the coverage a the API uh, replaces WCS, and so on and so on. All of these are RESTful services, uh, JSON-based, and so on, so, on, so modern uh, services. Want to know more? Come to my presentation this afternoon uh, in Fortuna East. GeoServer WFS3, Introduction to the RESTful, Schemaless JSON First Download Service, and I'll, I'll uh, sneak peek, I'll, uh, the, the presentation title actually had to be changed. Okay. Okay, so over to web coverage service. Um, there was nothing. There was nothing, no, no, no improvements <laughs> no. here. Okay, over to tiles. So um, one addition here is the addition of a new community module, allowing you to host your, uh, your raster, or your uh, tiles over in Azure Web Services. Uh, unlike S3, um, Azure doesn't let you do like a mass truncate, a mass delete. So each kind of tile are, uh, needed to be deleted one by one uh, with a separate call. GWC does that uh, concurrently. Uh, in terms of styling, there's always lots of fun styling improvements. Uh, one thing that's really fun is using SVG graphics um, uh, for all your different symbols. We now have the option to control the, fill, the filling and stroking can be controlled by SLD. Um, what's this one? Uh, mode. I'm not sure I know that one. Okay, I can do it. So um, if for those that uh, prefer to use a CSS, uh, you know that the syntax is more compact and so on, and uh, uh, you can nest rules, all of that is nice. But many people complained that uh, managing the cascading notion of CSS so that the, the rules mix together and override each other, they were confused by it. So uh, we added a, a translation mode which is called flat, which basically turns off cascading. So you basically have a, an SLD-like uh, behavior so each rule is applied in turn. If, uh, if it matches the feature, it draws uh, without any 
uh, any other uh, conflict. And uh, uh, so you, you basically end up with a CSS-like syntax, uh, uh, compactness and so on, but with an SLD behavior, which many find more manageable, even if uh, the, the default mode is still cascading. So if you like CSS, if you like cascading, you can still have it. Uh, we did a number of improvements uh, on the QJS side to export uh, SLDs. Now, uh, thanks to um, a number of sponsors, we can export the data symbolizers out of QJS. So you can go export style as SLD, and you can get uh, the, the style that you are looking at in QJS as, as SLD to use in GeoServer, um, and uh, also labeling and stuff like that. We have a new extension. It used to be a community module called SLD Service, which allows you to generate SLDs, uh, SLD styles on the fly based on a classification. So you can call this service and say, hey, I want a five classes quantile uh, classification using this color ramp. And uh, uh, you do it more or less like this. And GeoServer will inspect the data and generate the SLD for you. This works both for vectors and for rasters. So it's going to also have a look at the uh, insides of the pixels. It's also possible to do dynamic channel selection. We get more and more uh, multispectral and hyperspectral data. And what do, you, what do you want to do? Do you want to create an SLD for each possible band combination? In some cases, that would be hundreds of possible combinations. It's too many. So now you can uh, build a generic uh, three-band SLD selector and then pass the bands that you actually want to display from the client. So you actually get one server-side style, and you can pass in as many combinations as you want from the client. And well, it, it's just easier. The people select from a drop-down the kind of combination they want. Boom, they get the map. You want to go on? I'll go for this one. Uh, one thing that's interesting is uh, this is part of our web processing service. We've added a new uh, process that uses a small domain-specific language called GIFL. Now, this is a little bit like a raster calculator in that it allows you to write a little script on how you want to combine and process and uh, manipulate your raster data. So here we've got a very small script that implements on the fly uh, NDVI uh, index display. Um, another interesting one here is um, WPS 1.0 doesn't have a good way to list all the currently running processes. So we've added a new operation here called Git Executions, which lists the running processes. Users can view their processes. The administrator can see the complete list. Combined with that, we've got a new dismiss uh, pro uh, operation. So if you've got a process that's been out of control and running for three days, you can hunt it down and uh, cancel it. Uh, this is a vendor option for WPS 1.0. It is part of the WPS 2.0 spec. In terms of configuration and management, um, one change I really enjoy is that there's now a full screen style editor. So you can now look at the map on one side of your monitor and adjust the styles uh, on the other. And if you hit apply, you'll see a dynamic update of just the changes you've been working on. Um, there's a lot of features been added here by uh, Andrea and Niels. So one here is using an external graphics chooser. So if you need to add an icon into your style, you can uh, see the ones that are available to you from a drop-down list. Um, and there's also a color picker. So if you're filling in a color, you can choose from a nice little color palette widget. Uh, this is a change uh, done by Andrea. You see this one is, has the heart symbol, so it was probably done on his vacation. Uh, this makes working with SLDs a lot easier. You no longer have to have the standards open next to you. As you're typing, you can see autocomplete for um, uh, what keywords and so on are available. So the, the, as you're typing, if you use control space, this this, these suggestions will come up. Um, uh, one of our most requested features has been the ability to uh, enable and disable the different services on a layer-by-layer -layer basis. Uh, this has been an outstanding request for ever. Yes. And uh, so it's been added now. Under the publishing options near the top, you can control exactly what services are being used to publish your layer. Um, there's also a new status monitoring. So uh, if you go about GeoServer, rather than two tabs, you, there's a, a third one here called monitoring. And you can have a look at your execution environment, physical memory, swap, CPU load, network usage. This is quite handy for uh, looking at what's happening in a production system. 
Okay, in terms of security, we have Geofence, which has been a community module for like uh, too many years. <laughs> I don't remember how many. And it has now gradu graduated to extension. With the Geofence, uh, you can do more uh, complex uh, security rules, such as uh, filtering attributes, filtering by alphanumeric attributes, filtering by area, so you can tell who can see what in a much more detailed way. Or you can say something like, given this user, this service, he can only see these three layers, and so on, which is much more sophisticated than what we have built in the box. Uh, the authentication key module also graduated to extension. The authentication key is uh, this notion of putting a, a key in the URL to identify yourself, which by itself would be uh, not secure at all, <laughs> because everybody can see the URL. Uh, I mean, even if you're using HTTPS, uh, people could uh, snoop it uh, looking at your screen and stuff like that. But there is also REST API to manage uh, the, um, um, uh, the keys, so you can uh, I don't know, keep them alive for a couple of hours and stuff like that. Uh, also, whoa. So that's a good cue that uh, where we really are running out of time. So I'm going to go pretty quickly here through some of the changes to the GeoServer internals. We do uh, finally offer Java 11 support. This has been a really uh, broad-based community effort. Uh, we'd like to thank uh, the organizations which sponsored this activity. Um, so GeoServer now works with Java 8 and uh, Java 11. Um, and we've been testing with OpenJDK. Um, moving on, here's our happy little code sprint. Another under the hood change is we're now using the Java Advanced Imaging extension operations by default. Um, and another change that we've been working on, uh, or Andrea has been working on for six months, has been really improving our code base. So Andrea has engaged a lot of static analysis uh, tools, and he's been going through and uh, cleaning up a lot of the kind of easy mistakes that, um, or difficult mistakes that they pointed out to us. Lots of security fixes, lots of updates to new libraries. Uh, we do ask, if you are on our user list, uh, there's far more questions being asked than uh, people helping out answering them, so we would like it, your assistance. If you do find a security uh, vulnerability, please follow our responsible uh, disclosure policy. Um, yeah, uh, we would also love to see more developers joining our team. We're recruiting as part of our Phosphor G developer workshops. We do encourage any service providers that uh, use GeoServer to take part in our monthly bug stomps. Looking ahead, we would love to uh, work on passing OGC uh, site compliance. Um, we were running this on our old build server, but that's sadly gone. We would love to have that uh, confidence back again, so we are uh, looking at putting together um, some fundraising and so on to take on that. So thanks. So we have approximately two minutes for questions. Are there any questions? So we prepared a slide for that. Uh, so Planet has been acquired by, uh, sorry, Boundless has been acquired by uh, Planet Inc. Uh, and so yeah, that's what's happened to Boundless. <laughs> now to be fair, Boundless was a startup, and so it's really nice that they've been able to be successfully purchased, so. That said, uh, Planet is still part participating in our community. They are offering the build servers that we are now running on. And uh, there are at least a couple of people that are contributing fixes and improvements and the like uh, still today. Okay. Microphone. Sorry. Hi. We have a, a number of uh, issues with um, vector tiles. Uh, we believe most of them are related to geo web cache. Uh, I was I was wondering, is there any any work uh, currently going on uh, around uh, vector tiles? So that work was primarily uh, spearheaded by uh, Boundless and some of the developers over there. So we are actively recruiting uh, folks to work in these areas. I've done a little bit of work in that area, so if you have a pull request, I'd be happy to review. Yep. And also, GeoSolution has been, been working with the uh, vector tiles in the OGC vector tiles pilot and TASBED 15. 
uh, but the thing is we haven't found any problem. Open layers seems to be chewing those vector tiles to server generates without any problem. Hi. Hi. Yeah, uh, at this moment, the current life cycle of the project is every six months to be a new version. Uh, for a small team on FDI that we're supporting the GIS server, that puts a little bit of effort. We need to chase you all the time that uh, you're creating a new version and we need like, to update and uh, create not the issues, but a lot of workload for small teams. So are there any plans or any future plans for uh, something more automated for auto updates or something that uh, would help to stress, to relieve the stress of uh, teams? Not that I know of, but it would be would welcome someone uh, working in that area. The, the, the reality of GeoServer is that the core developers are maxed out. They cannot take on anything else. Like it, there is even people trying to drop us new functionality. We cannot maintain it. If you want to develop something, you will have to maintain it because we are totally maxed out. There are like a few Docker containers that package the work we do up, and so you might be able to look at that as an approach, but really you're offloading that effort on someone else. Um, yeah. Okay. Thanks, everyone. You've got approximately four minutes to run to the next session.